Hello everybody, anybody new to my channel, my name is Jeff and welcome to Home Machinist. This is my little machine shop. Well, I need to do a video on uh, setting a precise angle on a compound because I need to make a bearing separator. So this is a good time to do it. As you see, I have a crankshaft here. When I separated the cases, the bearing stayed on the crank. Um, I don't have a press, but I did have some material, so I've decided to make a bearing separator. I need, I've already machined it as you can see to this donut, I need to cut an angle from this corner to this inside corner right here. So I need to set my compound to a precise angle. And I don't know that angle, this angle, or this dimension here, this length. This is our hypotenuse. I need these. This is where we set the compound to. The compound travels the length of the hypotenuse. But in trigonometry, if you have a couple dimensions or a dimension and an angle, two angles, two dimensions and an angle, you can figure out anything else. It doesn't matter. As long as you have certain dimensions and angles, you can figure out the unknowns. So here, we know this is 900, and we know this is one inch, 303 thou. So we have these two known dimensions. So the 90 degree right triangle, this is all we need to find these out. In my day, we had to pull calculator out, pencil, paper, and do trig that way. But now there's an app for everything. You no longer have to, to learn trigonometry to, to do this. So this here is the Hortec trigonometry calculator off Google Play. Um, very simple. We have two known dimensions. We put our two known dimensions in. Side A, side B. Side A is 900. Side B, one inch 303. And we just hit calculate. And there you go. We now have this angle, this angle, and the length that our compound needs to travel, which is the hypotenuse. So then again, there again, there's an app for everything. You can do this in seconds now, literally seconds. So with this done, and we now have our three unknowns. I put a little diagram on the whiteboard over here. We'll move to the whiteboard and I'll give you a little bit more detail and explanation of this. Then we'll move to the lathe and we'll set the indicator up, set our compound up and prove our angle is set perfect. All right, let's take a look at the whiteboard. Okay, I made a little diagram here on the board with the numbers we just got off the trig calculator. So, the compound travels the length of the hypotenuse. This will be the travel of the compound. This will be the travel of the cross slide. This is our angle that the compound's set to. We're going to use the dial indicator to make sure everything corresponds to get this, to make sure our compound's set at that angle. So these numbers will be traveled by the cross slide and the compound with the indicator to repeat a zero. <clears throat> when you have four sides, <clears throat> the angles of four sides always equals 360 degrees. The angles of three sides always equal 180 degrees. This is a side view of our part. The two known dimensions and the known right angle is what, the, what you use in trig to figure out your other dimensions and angles. So again, cross slide is going to use this number compound is going to use this number and our indicator will start at zero here we'll travel the compound out to this point then we'll run the cross slide in and it should zero again here so we're looking for a zero here and here let's move on to the lathe I took a protractor and I, and I set my compound to a rough 55 degrees then I went ahead and dialed that compound in dead on so the compound is set dead accurately right now. I didn't want to waste time in a video tapping my compound back and forth trying to, oh God, I run out of breath so fast. Try to tap my compound back and forth trying to get a zero. So I went ahead and preset pre it. So at this point, what we do, we have our indicator mounted to our compound. It must be mounted to the compound. We're going to use my tailstock quill because my quill is dead zero along the side. Um, I have used uh, round stock in, in the chuck to do this before I go ahead and turn a piece of round stock down um, in the chuck and once that's done it's literally center line to the chuck and I'll use a piece of round stock coming out of the chuck 
but we're going to use my tail stock quill for this one so at this point we're going to run the cross slide in until we hit zero on the indicator okay that's zero and we're going to zero the hand wheels dial okay so now i've set my dial here i, I can barely see these little lines i'm so blind okay so our our hand wheel to our cross slide the dial was set to zero you do the same thing with the compound my compound's already set to zero so at this point we're going to travel the length of the hypotenuse or dimension of one five hundred and eighty three thou okay so here i'm going to we're going to back the, the compound off the quill one inch five hundred eighty three thou 100 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 one inch one inch 100 one inch 200 one inch 300 one inch 400 one inch 500 and 83 thousandths so we got a little backlash here so we're going to go past it and come back to our 23 which is actually 83 because we're turning counterclockwise on the compound okay so I'm set at one inch 583 thou on the compound now at this point we're going to use the cross side to travel back towards the quill to see if we pick our zero back up when it touches the quill and that again is one inch 303 thou okay so here we go 100 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 one inch one inch 100 one inch 200 or one inch 50 thou one inch or, or excuse me one inch 250 one inch 260 one inch 270 one inch 280 our hand our dial is going to start moving any second there it is okay my hand wheel dial is zeroed right there and where's our indicator on zero our compound is set to 55.366 degrees exactly <clears throat> So real quick I need to put this in here I failed to say it so I have to reshoot a little bit and now I have to edit this in um, so when you're setting your compound and you're off your zeros are off you move the compound half the, the distance that the zero is off so if it, it's off five thousandths you move it two and a half if you move the compound to zero at either point okay um, you're going to end up moving the other side of the compound out by the same distance so always tap your compound half the distance that the indicator is showing again if it shows five thousandths you only tap to move the compound two and a half thou any dimension or any amount that the compound is off half the distance is what you tap it and uh, that's how you bring it into zero okay we'll uh, we'll edit this in so that's it that's all there is to this um well i guess i'm ready to cut my angles in my bearing separator the next video is going to be me completing this bearing separator and we're going to knock those uh junk chinese bearings off this crankshaft and i'll show you why the bearings stayed on the crankshaft when i separated the cases of this engine um and we're going to use a micrometer to show you why those bearings didn't stay in the cases everybody i love you um i want to thank everybody for watching my videos um, please like share and subscribe i hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and a fantastic work week coming up and i'll get the bearing separator finished up this week and we'll get that video up next friday everybody take care of yourselves and uh we'll see you next week